Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Lauren Cielo from Golden Rose Psychic Services. And I'm Crystal Heineman from Crystal Sunshine Psychic Services. Welcome to the Metaphysical Q&A podcast. <laughs> Where we're making metaphysics crystal clear. And golden delicious. <laughs> Metaphysical Q&A is an audio as well as a video podcast that is going to shift the way each human views their experiences that they're having here on Earth. That's right. As professional clairvoyant healers and teachers, Crystal and I are using this platform to explain in easily understood terms all of the experiences that we have on this planet. And our viewers and listeners supply the questions. That's you all. So thank you. We're so grateful for you. And if you'd like to submit a question, you can please visit our website at www.metaphysicalqa.com or you can go to our Facebook page, Metaphysical Q&A. And of course, if we use your question here on our podcast, one of us will offer you a free reading. Excellent. Well, let's get to the questions for this episode. All right, Lauren. Well, we've got three really great questions. Our viewers are so amazing. So let's get to it. So question number one comes from Laura in San Angelo, Texas. Hi, Laura. Thanks so much for your support. All right. So Laura wants to know, um, I feel most uh, most connected to angels. Should I ask them about my purpose and contracts if I want to know what I'm supposed to be doing here? That's a great question. Yeah. I love working with angels. All right. And question number two, um, how do I know my contracts and how to break the bad ones not serving me? The bad ones. Bad contracts. Bad contracts. All right. That's going to be a good one. All right. Number three comes from Tori in Washington, D.C. And Tori asks, how can I live up to my soul contracts? Which is a great question. So, um, Lauren, I kind of think that, of course, everything is based around soul contracts today. So how about the metaphysics of soul contracts? This sounds great. But to be honest, I can't believe I have anything else to say on the topic of soul contracts. It seems it's the only thing I ever talk about. (laughs) Well, keep on talking. (laughs) (laughs) But let's get into it. So as we always say, nothing can happen on the earth plane without a soul contract to specify exactly what's going to happen. Now, I know that saying that makes us feel that here on earth that we don't have free will. And in the, I guess, the most specific terms, we don't. So let's take an example. So you're coming up to an intersection and you're trying to decide, am I going to turn right or am I going to turn left? Okay. well, whichever way you turn is because of a soul contract. But let's go a little bit farther. Let's say that you have a contract to turn left and there is another contract to turn right. So what happens when you don't fulfill a contract is either your higher self revises it or destroys it or carries it over to another time. So it really is true that everything that happens to you is because your higher self has encoded it into one of these soul contracts. So let's get into the questions, Crystal. Oh, I'm really excited for today's episode. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so question number one, Lauren. Um, it comes from Laura once again in San Angelo, Texas. Thanks so much, Lauren. Laura. Um, all right, so she asks, I feel most connected to angels. Should I ask them about my purpose and uh, also my contracts if I want to know what I'm really supposed to be doing here on earth? That's a great question. Yeah. So let's talk about beings without bodies. Now, and that's what we call an angel. We are beings with bodies. And of course, those um, invisible angels and guides are beings without bodies. Now, I think this is probably easily understood when we talk about swinging a pendulum. And one of the ways I teach um, people to swing a pendulum is to understand who is swinging it. Because there are so many different types of beings without bodies, and they all have their own scope. Maybe they're the information that they're privy to. So when you think about angels, 
um, they're more like cheerleaders. So going back to that analogy, if you're going to turn right at that intersection, they're like, yay, we love you, turn right. Likewise, if you turn left, yay, you turned left, you did so well, keep doing that, right? So the angel that you may be asking about your contracts and your soul purpose may have no idea. So that's one of the reasons, um, think of them as consultants. You're the business owner and you have this group of consultants. Well, would you ask the person that you're contracting in to do your website, would you ask them if you should invest your money in some other project that they know nothing about, has nothing to do with websites? So there is one specific being without a body that we all have contracts with. Each of us has a contract with one of these types of creatures, and they're called Akashic Record Keepers. Now, the reason why they're the ones to go to in, in regards to this type of question is because they have access to all of your records and your records are contracts. That's what those records are. So, uh, Laura, um, if I were to ask an angel about my soul contracts and my soul purpose, the first question I would ask them is, do you know the answer? To this question before you you um, phrase the question to them so and the angels you're working with may talk to your record keeper so they may know but if you want to go to the source crystal and i suggest that you um, speak with your akashic record keepers and i'm just betting that crystal right now is reading your akashic record keepers so, <laughs> so crystal would you tell laura about her record keeper I just got angel bumps with that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's such a great answer, Lauren. Yeah. And um, just to piggyback off of that, I agree. And I love working with angels. I love them. And like I said, I mean, I just got angel bumps. So that's always, um, it's sort of like a um, my temperature sort of shifts and changes whenever the angels come in because they carry such a high vibration. And I think cheerleader is such a, a, a great way to describe angels because it is the way that um angels always come through for myself as well as my clients it's like um if you could only see you the way that we see you you know i mean you would be carrying so much self-love like that's really like the ultimate message from angels right mm -hmm. is to just be like oh my gosh like you could do no wrong in our eyes like we just love you so much like you know like and so they do, they just carry this really beautiful high vibration and they really are, are here to lift us up. But again, like if you, um, to get back to your question, if you're really wanting to know purpose, if you're really wanting to know why you're here, what's your path, the angels are the ones that are going to be cheering you along the sidelines, but they're not, whatever you do, they're going to think it's wonderful. So they're not going to give you a clear connection, clear communication as to what that is, because everything you do is going to be great. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like having like the world's best mom, you know, like, oh, it's so great. <laughs> no, no, it's like your grandmother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They always love it, right? They're going to leave cookies for you and everything. So it's like they're the, they're the best. So I highly encourage you to continue to work with angels, of course. And, you know, how I work with them is I love having them in my space and like keeping the vibration high. But really, when I want answers, I do call in my Akashic Record Keeper. And um, I do. I'm so excited to bring forward yours. Now, um, it's a gentleman that comes forward, Laura, and his name is Jericho, which I find very, very interesting. And I always find when I think Laura um, finds the same thing that when you really do maybe like Google the name Jericho to find out really what the root meaning of it is because the names that they give always have so much more substance it's so multi-dimensional than what we can understand right here and again i'm getting the angel bump so jericho he's really here to help you and so you can work with him and how you can work with him is you could just call him in just with intention you know now that you know that his name is jericho it sort of allows you to work with him more closely of course and really finding what your path is and what your contracts are and your purpose is 
now, um, of course, we've got a lot of information about Acacia Record Keepers that you can definitely, you know, go on Metaphysical Q&A and find out further. So I won't get too, too much in detail about that. But um, how I would best suggest, and I'm asking Jericho right now, like, well, how best can um, Laura work with you in really wanting to know what your sole purpose and what your contracts are? And the way that he says it is maybe perhaps like it seems to be that right before you go to bed at night or something that that's a good space for you. So maybe that's when you take a few moments before you're shutting your eyes to really connect with Jericho. And you can ask him to, you know, show me what my path is, like show me what my purpose is. And when you go to bed at night, you know, perhaps Jericho is going to, you know, be holding your hand and really showing you your path along the way. And how that would translate essentially is that you would wake up maybe in the middle of the night or maybe you would wake up in the morning. And you would have a clear idea as to like, oh my gosh, I just got this really great idea about like, that feels like really good to me. That feels like that's right along, like something that I would want to do that sounds like my path. And that's really how they end up working with us. Um, and I think that that's a really great way, you know, Jericho says that's a really great, great way for you to connect with him. And um, I bet that you're going to wake up and have some really great ideas about what your path is. And um, as far as like your purpose and your contracts and stuff, of course, course, it's like you just have to live through them, right? You have to live through them. And um, I think a lot of our clients, they're always very concerned about like, what is my path? What is my purpose? And to more so answer that one thing that's really been shown to me a lot lately about path and purpose is, and I was one of these that really thought that I had like one path, right? I had one destination. And if I, if I didn't get that right, then like, oh my gosh, like, why did I even come here? Right? I really thought, and it really doesn't work that way. We have several, you know, our, Lauren was talking about free will. We've got several paths that we, we could really walk around, right? And really, it's just about living through that stuff. So Think about your purpose. Maybe think about the time that when you were really, really little, what were the things that you really enjoyed doing? right? That is that your purpose, that like kindred spirit of like who you were before, like all of society sort of like got into your way. Think about who that was. Who were you, Laura, at that very young juvenile age? And like, maybe you were really outgoing. Maybe you were inward, whatever that personality is, grab a hold of that and like move forward and how you can encapsulate your purpose with that. That's, that's one thing that my guides have always shown me. So, um, but you can work with Jericho and you could work with him and he'll um, enlighten you. I'm sure. So I hope that helps. Excellent. Yeah. Hope that helps Laura. <laughs> All right, Crystal, this brings us up to question number two. And this one is sent by Donna a in Kentucky. So Donna, thank you so much for your question. Now, Donna asks, how do I know my contracts and how do I break the bad ones that aren't serving me? Oh, good question, Donna. Okay. Well, <laughs> first and foremost, how about you get a reading? <laughs> um, Lauren and I, of course, were both clairvoyant readers and healers. And um, the easiest way is to book an appointment with someone like us or us in particular. And we we can you know, read your contracts for you. But it's really, really hard to read your own contracts because you're not neutral to the information, right? You're completely invested into what the outcome is or what the scenario is. You're completely invested. And so it's very, very difficult to be very neutral in reading your soul contracts. And you do really need someone that is of a neutral mind to read your contracts, right? Because because sometimes they could be pretty tough, right? And so if they're kind of tough, then, you know, it's hard to not what we call get lit up when you read them. You know, it's like you really don't want it to be that. So you want someone neutral to read your contracts. So, of course, the easiest way, book an appointment with one of us or someone that does read soul contracts. But what I really want to look into, Donna, is the idea that you think that you might have some bad contracts and perhaps that they're not serving you. That was really what I found interesting about your question. Now, your higher self, it never shoots itself in the foot, right? You, we, 
you don't create bad, quote unquote, bad contracts. And in fact, Lauren and I, in our um, teaching space, as well as our reading space, we don't ever see anything that's good or bad, right? They're just experiences that we're having. That's We're just experiences that the higher self is creating, and it's not good or bad, right? You're having to live through and learn through some sort of adventure. So the higher self is never going to shoot itself in the foot and create a bad contract. However, it might be kind of a tough one. How's that? It might be something that's you know, really, really difficult to live through. It might be something that appears to be bad. Like, why would my higher self ever create something like this? You know, like, what's the experience? What is it? So you could see how, like, all of a sudden you start asking those questions and you get a little bit more lit up, you know? So that's why, you know, you're not in a neutral space. And so you would need someone like us to do that. And quite honestly... That's why in metaphysical Q&A, why we invented it and why we created it. And furthermore, the teachings that we, um, that we conduct here is all about allowing you to live through your contracts with ease and grace. So say, for instance, you think you have something that's really difficult, really challenging in your life, right, that you might say is must be a really bad contract. Well, hop on over to metaphysical Q&A teachings because the way that we um, shift your space is really allowing yourself, to, your um, your physical body to live through these contracts with an ease and grace. And really, the thing is, is like, the best thing you could do is just get out of the way of what higher self is wanting to experience. And so once you do that, it seems to really be a lot easier, right? And then also another thing, Lauren and I both work with, uh, Lauren was just talking about beings without bodies in our last segment about angels. Well, we also work with um, beings without bodies that have the titles of healing masters. And mine is Sabu and uh, Lauren's is Anki Yaya. And essentially our reading space, um, it's so multidimensional where it's like where the readers, right? Sort of the translator of the information and energy that's in your space. And then our healing masters, which are, our, it's a spirit guide, if you will, or a being without body, um, is actually in the background shifting space, right? Moving energy, moving things. And essentially, the really big meat of their job of what they do is they sort of go to um, sort of coax your higher self to sign you know, better, con if you will, better contracts or something to be updating or revising a contract that would make it a little bit easier to learn the lesson, you see. And as Lauren's uh, trusted Auntie Yaya always says is that you can you can have a destination, right, of a lesson that you're wanting to experience, but you, the way that you get there can either be carrying the brick or carrying the feather, right? And so that's essentially what Agdiyaya and Cebu do is coerce, sort of coax your higher self to be like, you know, you really signed up to carry the brick in this lesson, in this adventure life. How about maybe you can learn it the same way by carrying the feather. And that's really what their main job is with, with both of us both of us in our work. And so they essentially are counselors to your higher self, right? And what we can do is, like I said, our reading space is very multidimensional. As they're working this um, and we're reading, we're the interpreters. So what we do is really see if your higher self, you know, is going to be coaxed, is going to be coerced into carrying that feather versus the brick. And then that's the part that um, we can bring it to you and translate to you if your higher self decided to make that shift and change. So, but um, I would take a gamble that uh, Lauren is really going to have some additional information on your question. <laughs> Lauren? Excellent. Well, it is true, and we all know it, right? That um, we've had very hard times in our lives. And I know personally, because I know Crystal so well, that both her and I have suffered greatly um, here on earth from some of the contracts that our higher self has signed. But we wouldn't be here right now talking to you if we hadn't lived through those things. So I, um, Crystal said it really well, that we can't change your contracts. You here on earth, can't change your contracts, but our healing masters are hopefully good salesmen and can go to the astral and, and negotiate with your higher self. Maybe the same way to have that experience 
only it, it doesn't kick your butt here on earth. And I, and I have seen that many times when I read that I see a contract for something and Anki Yaya is able to do it. And we can see that happen when we're reading. Now, it doesn't always happen. But when it does, you'll, you know, we'll tell you and you'll know that that circumstance is going to change for you. So let's take a peek at some of the contracts, Donna, that you've signed that that you might consider bad. So let me take a peek. Has to do with your dad. <laughs> at least it wasn't your mother. It usually goes to mother. Well, you might have had some with those too. But let me take a peek at this with your father. Um, it's almost to me. And if I could say it in a nutshell, it feels more like a patriarchal energy. So it's not just your dad. It's you being a female in a male-dominated society. So um, let me ask your higher self why it thinks that's beneficial. Hang on, let's see. It has to do with where you start and where you end. So I see an image of your father or the patriarch, okay, and you're below that energy. And I ask your higher self, why, why do you submit? Why did you agree to incarnate in this reality in a female body when you knew that you were going to be less than? And your higher self shows me this. You're moving up. So without being underneath, you would never have the opportunity to rise up. So you see, that's how it always works. Right. So, yes, you know, if we're all sitting on the astral having tea and we're looking down on Earth, we might all agree. Me, you and Crystal, ooh, don't be in a female body. That would suck down there. And yet we did, didn't we? And so the, the, the experience that higher self wanted to have couldn't be have obtained unless you incarnated in a female body. So maybe that might start to get you thinking that these are just experiences. That's all they are. But again, if you check out our teachings at Metaphysical Q&A, there might be a teaching there for whatever you're going through that really helps you live through those teachings, just like Crystal said. So I hope that helps. All right, so we're moving on. Question number three. And this one comes from Tori in Washington, D.C. Hi, Tori, and thanks so much. We're so grateful for you. Yeah. So Tori has a great question, and she asks, how can I live up to my soul contracts? Which I feel like is a brilliant question. Actually, I think that is the most important question that anyone can ask themselves who's on a spiritual or a healing path. You know, a lot of us, we think, oh, all I need to do is heal my mommy issues. All I need to do is lose weight. All I need to do is quit drinking beer, right? Like we have one healing focus after the other. But really when it boils down to what's most important, it is fulfilling your soul's contracts. That's it. Because if we are a little puppet, on a string and the only reason that we're here the only reason we have a body is so that our higher self can have those experiences if one wants to live a relatively easy life then coming out of resistance to your soul contracts is the way to do it i know crystal will agree with me that at times in our lives that we're really really hard um, we look back now and we realize we didn't have to stay in pain for that long, that we had something in our body chakras and aura, either it was an energy we were running or information that we were running from that kept us in that self-defeating cycle and strung out the experience for maybe much longer than it needed to be. So I asked, and the way I found this out was just by accident. I asked Anki Yaya, I said, man, you know, when I was younger, my life was so incredibly hard. Really, I'm surprised I'm alive, Crystal. I really am. Some of the things that I've done and lived through. And what he said to me, he said, well, it's because you're not in resistance to, to the contracts your higher self is signed. You're, you're more in the game now. You're, you're not fighting against the strings that are pulling the levers. Right. You have a, a desire or an opportunity and you're not afraid. 
you jump right into it and have the experience. So that's why we created the teachings at Metaphysical q and I know everyone loves this podcast. Crystal and I are, are, you know, witty and funny. Hopefully you find that and hopefully you learn a lot. But in the teachings, we really get down to how can you, for example, go through a divorce? How can you parent children that are having problems? You know, there's a whole array of different human experiences that Crystal and I have created metaphysical teachings to make it easier for you to live through. So if you had one goal, one healing goal in mind, I would think it would be to release the information and energy that you've been programmed in all likelihood by your society, your parents, your religion, name it, to not do your soul contracts. And that is what make, makes life extremely difficult. So if you want hands-on, step-by-step processes on how to live through your soul contracts with the least amount of friction as possible, then check out the teachings at Metaphysical Q&A. Excellent. Yeah, we look forward to be your teachers. So Tori, I was taking a peek at you and I, what I wanted to look at was any resistance to you actually living through your contracts. Like, you know, if there was any part of you that's in resistance to that. And of course, how that resistance would look like here would be, you know, a lot of strife, right? And a lot of um, like just feeling like, oh my gosh, like, am I ever going to get this right? Like, oh my gosh, it feels so challenged. It feels so difficult. That's really how resistance looks like when you're, um, you know, when you're not really living through your contracts with uh, an ease and grace, you know, and really being, um, you know, uh, working with them. So it was really interesting. So there's a couple of things that um, that came up in your space. There's one thing that comes up about, um, well, it's all about self-love. And really, that's the energy that you can run to allow yourself to really be with your contracts, to be working with your contracts. And the resistance tends to be, um, it's actually in your third chakra. And that's where we hold our competition. That's where we hold our ego. And really what it comes up with is being like almost in competition with yourself and it comes up as like you're really hard on yourself like when you're going through something it's like you really almost sort of like to it's almost like you sort of like to bash yourself in a way and it's like you almost talk down to yourself and it sort of throws you in resistance to your contracts where it's like you almost really blame yourself there's a lot of like blame there's a lot of like guilt and shame energy that you're running it and so that's why I was shown like self-love. So if like, if you are in those instances where you are feeling challenged, you know, and you do feel that you are in resistance to those contracts, if you can sh- uh, shift that guilt and shame that like really being in competition with yourself and like having that, you know, um, you know, that the bashing that we all do, I mean, I catch myself doing it all the time. And if you can shift that to really running a self-love energy and meaning that it's like, you know, like whatever I'm going to go through, you know, it's like, I'm going to, you know, I know that I'm going through it for a reason. I know that this is, you know, what I'm supposed to be learning and sort of shift that, you know, bashing into that love for self. And then there's another thing that comes up and it's really about like carrying other people's information with you, sort of like society. Like, so if you have a soul contract and if it's something that maybe doesn't sort of fit into the cookie cutter idea, it tends to be that you have an issue with like stepping forward into that contract, you know, and, and really it's just covered with other people's information. Of course, that would be uh, societies, it would be your parents' information. So something, so any sort of that, I, I'm pretty sure that's going to resonate with you, anything that's sort of like outside of like the cookie cutter idea of like what you should be, should be doing or anything that, you know, that you are raised to sort of fit inside this box. If there's something that, you know, you're sort of being led to that's outside of that, there seems to be a little bit of resistance with that. And um, so what Cebu is doing, my healing master, is actually allowing you to sort of try to release, like coerce your higher self and releasing, you know, society's information that's inside of you that's really allowing you to, um, or it was sort of holding you back from like stepping outside the box, essentially. And um, and he also wants to give you a big energetic hug and allowing you to love yourself and um, not really... Um, so much be inside your your head and be caught up in the idea of like um 
um, being really hard on yourself and, you know, really sort of just being a little bit kinder and gentler with yourself. So I hope that helps you, Tori. And it's a pleasure, you know, to read you and to work with you. And I do hope that we find you over in the teaching side as well. And we're so grateful for your answers and we're so grateful for everyone's answers. Otherwise we wouldn't have our questions. Otherwise we wouldn't have this podcast today. So if you did hear your question on this podcast, would you please visit our website at www.metaphysicalqa.com and there's a, um, a free reading button there. So go ahead and click that and let us know. So uh, one of us will, will read you. Excellent. Well, Crystal, do you think we've done it again? I didn't think we nailed that one. <laughs> I believe we've done it yet again and we're, we're making metaphysics crystal clear. And golden delicious. <laughs> right. And once again, visit our website. It's www.metaphysicalqa. And from there, you can actually subscribe to our podcast. Of course, we offer it video on YouTube, which is super fun. And so please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll get notification when we upload a new video. Or you can find us um, on iTunes. Please subscribe. We would love to hear you. Please review us. We would love that also. Or anywhere else that you get your podcast from, you know, you can find that on our website and you can subscri subscribe to us and also review us. And um, if you're interested in my personal work, and I hope that you are, please visit my website at crystalsunshinepsychicservices.com. And you can find me on the internet at goldenrosepsychic.com and laurencielo.com. Well, until next episode, we'll call that a healing. Bye-bye. Please hang up and try again.